In this video, we're going to talk about covalent bonding. We will talk about what they are and how covalent bonds form. Now, you may be wondering by looking at this picture, is covalent bonding about umbrellas or about raining? Well, the nylon in the umbrella would be made of covalent bonds. However, this picture is to represent the fact that covalent bond is all about sharing. A covalent bond forms when elements share their electrons. This is different from ionic bonding because in an ionic bond, uh, one element, the metal, is actually going to give its electron over to the nonmetal. So covalent bonds actually form when nonmetals bond with each other. Once again, this is different from ionic bonding because in ionic bonding, we have a metal over on this side of the periodic table that is going to combine with a nonmetal. So let's look at an example of a covalent bond. Here we have two nonmetals. We have hydrogen and we have chlorine, and I've drawn the Lewis structures for both of these compounds. Chlorine over here on the periodic table, right here, is in group seven, and it has seven valence electrons. Hydrogen over here, the only nonmetal that's on the left side of the periodic table, it has one valence electron because it's in group one. And so here's the Lewis structures, the electron dot structures for these two elements. And we know that uh, nonmetals want to steal electrons. They want to pull electrons away from other elements. And so if we bring two nonmetals together, they're both trying to pull on each other's electrons here, and they can't do it right? because they're both nonmetals. They can't steal those electrons. So they both want to obey uh, the octet rule. In a sense, chlorine wants to have eight electrons. Hydrogen, a little bit different since it's in the first period of the periodic table, the first row there, it only needs two electrons in its valence shell and it'll be happy. So they're kind of at an impasse here. They can't uh, steal the electron from the other element. And so what they do instead is they share their valence electrons. And so if they actually bring both of their electrons uh, into the center here and share them, we can see that now hydrogen will see both of these electrons as its own electrons and so hydrogen has two electrons. Chlorine will see both of these electrons at its own electrons, so chlorine will have a total of eight electrons, and it's satisfying the octet rule. The way that we actually write this covalent uh, compound, or the chemical formula here, is we would put both elements symbol here, and we would separate them by a line, and that dash uh, means a okay, covalent bond. We know that there's actually two electrons within that line. Let's look at another example here. So let's look at water. Water, you probably have seen this chemical formula before, looks like this, H2O. And so this says that water has two hydrogens and an oxygen. And so we're going to draw something called the structural formula for water, just like we saw for HCl with the uh, symbols in the dash there. We're going to do the same thing here for water. But let's take a look at the valence electrons in these two elements first. So oxygen up here on the periodic table. Oxygen's right here. It's in group six, and so it has six valence electrons. Hydrogen, once again, only has one valence electrons. So the steps here to drawing a structural formula is that first you should start by just drawing a uh, Lewis structure for each element so you kind of see what you're working with. So here's oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and I was strategic in where I placed these electrons. You can imagine a box being around this element, and you want to have uh, kind of a symmetrical drawing here. And you can only have two electrons on one side of our box. So we have four sides to the box, and I've made it look symmetrical. That's important because we want to pair up the unpaired electrons. Electrons want to be paired, whether they're in what we call right here a lone pair, they're not in a bond, or whether they're in a bonded pair. So I was a little bit strategic in the way I drew that. We'll draw a Lewis structure here for hydrogen, and so hydrogen has one electron. And I'm going to draw the other hydrogen on this side. Okay, once again, electrons want to be paired up. They can be in a lone pair or a bonded pair. And so I could see right here, this could work as a bonded pair, and this could work as a bonded pair. And so if I count up the electrons around oxygen now, I could see that oxygen has eight electrons since it's sharing these two electrons with hydrogen. Let's go ahead and redraw this as a structural formula. So we have oxygen here in the middle, and we have our two hydrogens on either side with those bonded pairs and then we'll put our lone pairs in there as well. 
Now, just so you know, this isn't actually what water looks like. Water actually looks like this. This is actually the way we would draw that. And we'll talk about why that is in a later video. It'll be called Vesper Theory. So you can look for that video. Okay, let's do one more example here together. So methane. Methane is a molecule composed of hydrogen and carbon. Now for this one, I'm not going to tell you how many of each element we have. I'll just tell you that they're made of hydrogen uh, and carbon. So let's start with this. We'll start by drawing a Lewis structure for each of these elements. Carbon, if I look on the periodic table, is going to have, uh, it's in group 4 here. All right here's carbon, so it has four valence electrons. So let's go back there and put the four valence electrons. Remember, we want to be strategic to make it very symmetrical like that. And then hydrogen has just one valence electron. Now, carbon needs four more electrons, and you may be able to see this already, since hydrogen has one valence electron. If we continue to add hydrogens all the way around here, we should be able to get carbon to have a complete octet. So if I look at all of these bonded pairs that would be forming, uh, that's going to give carbon eight electrons and get even, uh, give each of those hydrogens two electrons. So let's redraw that and actually draw the structural formula here. So carbon with four bonds going to our hydrogens, and that would be the structural formula or the Lewis structure for methane. Okay, why don't we just do one more here? We'll draw the chemical formula for ammonia. Ammonia is made up of nit uh, nitrogen and hydrogen. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here and start by drawing a Lewis structure for each of these elements. Nitrogen has five valence electrons because it's in group five. And then hydrogen we know only has one valence electron. And so you could probably see that we're going to add two more hydrogens here and then we have these bonds that are going to form and so we can see nitrogen actually is going to have three bonds and then it will have this one lone pair up there so electrons want to be paired whether they're in a bonded pair or a uh, lone pair and so here's what we end up with for the Lewis structure for ammonia and that is covalent bonding